record on oh i can't believe that that hasn't been recording do you mind if i start again <laughs> okay i'm going to literally start again right for those of you who have just listened to me we are talking about <laughs> organized for your whole your whole session in um trip adventure in costa rica we're going to run through your itinerary flights visas kit health and safety phones wi-fi and money starting off with your flights top tip for everyone as you you must arrive into costa rica and all the countries in central south america with proof of leaving that can be a flight or a bus ticket the bus ticket you can use tico tico buses okay two with your flights regardless of what time you arrive because i know some of you are not all coming on the same flight you will be met by a member of our staff okay so when you come through immigration you then go through these big slidey doors okay you exit those doors and you hover literally there. Do not start wandering off and thinking you're going to go and get yourself a cup of coffee because our guide, is, it's chaotic there and our guide will be kind of parking up if they're not there with the leap sign. So don't wander off, okay? You will be met. If they're not there in five minutes, give them at least 20 minutes because they could be jammed in traffic. You, you, you do not, but do not panic and stay put, okay? Your first night is going to be in the Rosa of America Hotel, which is about 20 minutes away from the airport. It's sweet, sweet, sweet. We've used it for years. I've stayed there. It's very Costa Rican, so you're gonna think, whoa, they've got a great sense of style here, which you will get used to. So it's lots of bright green, bright red, tin roofs, you know, but, um, but it's, clean it's tidy it's got a lovely pool um it's a kind of gated gated hotel so you feel really safe and it's got a lovely pool you can get food and drinks there so you can at ease the next day we are going to do something new and instead of just getting up and darting off to get to santa teresa we're going to keep you as a team in San Jose and you're going to have another night at La Rosa and that day so we could do all the team bonding you can get to know each other on day one we're going to take you to the Poas volcano which is just on the edge of Santa of San Jose okay everyone loves it you're going to have a picnic at the top and it just kind of adds a, a, another dimension but we want to do it because when you get to we just want the team really kind of relaxed the chatting before you start that big journey the following <laughs> monday to santa teresa okay which is a big journey you've got um for a two and a half hour drive then you've got to catch the ferry across to the peninsula and then another couple of hours on the other side so it's a long haul you'll kind of stop on the way to get snacks and smoothies and things but just brace yourself for that journey OK, so with your itinerary, I'm just going to get it up here. Your first two weeks are going to be in Santa Teresa. OK, Santa Teresa is I like to describe it of on the Pacific coast as the kind of Ibiza of Costa Rica. OK, further up, you've got Tamarindo, which is more the Magaluf of um, Costa Rica. Santa Teresa, it's the uber vibe, surfy, yoga, lots of kind of cool bars, lots of kind of um, lovely kind of bars on the beach with kind of music. It's all very stylish, hippie, that type of vibe. Okay, lots of surfers wandering around, covered in tattoos. That is the thing in um, Costa Rica. Tattoos are cool and tattoo parlors are everywhere. Please don't go and get a tattoo. I beg you not to get a tattoo while you're up there because every, you know, and your parents will thank me for saying this. Please don't get one. Um, reason being, okay, is that if they get septic, if it gets, you know, just gets infected, it's a real bore because in that humidity, in that climate, 
cuts and things do not heal. And while they're healing, you can't go into water, into the sea, into the pool. So it's a real bore and it ruins your trip. So more of the story is no tattoos for you. OK, just admire the artwork on everybody else's body. So your first two weeks in Santa Teresa are a mix of uh, volunteering, um, working with work, volunteering, the Spanish Spanish lessons and the surfing. So starting off with the volunteering. Okay, we have, and you will see that Santa Teresa is a big commune, has a big community push towards the problem of plastic, which you will see firsthand. Okay, on the Pacific coast, every single day, relentlessly, the waves throw up, literally microplastics, big plastic, car doors, tires, flip-flops. Occasionally, you get a kind of fridge that just appears onto the beach. You would be amazed. The Pacific Ocean is a dumping ground worldwide, and it arrives on these beaches. So up and down the whole of this Pacific coast, it is a huge problem. And the community in Santa Teresa are really active at sorting this out because their beaches are world famous for surfing. And the whole thing is about tourism, so it's got to be kept good. So all our volunteers, every single group is involved in helping the community um, with this. And that means literally picking the plastic off the beach. It means going to the recycling centre, which was set up by Farrell Williams some years ago now, where all the recycling gets um, sorted, crushed, packed, and sent to America where it gets converted into nylon clothes and in, then sold there and the money comes back to the community. So it's a really good eye opener for a simple grassroots community project and how actually, you know, the community have taken the matter into their own hands. They have, they're not relying on government handouts. They're just like, right, what can we do? Let's roll up our sleeves and sort it. And this goes down to permaculture, growing their own vegetables, um, getting rid of their own waste. It's really, really in, insightful to see this happening. And so you will be involved in all aspects of that while you are there, okay? So that's your project work. The surfing, it is world famous for its surf. So you will be um, encouraged to take full use of that. So you'll be having surfing lessons and I promise you, if you think I am a hopeless, sir, I have tried surfing in Cornwall, maybe in the past, and I'm useless at this. I promise you, everybody gets up and everyone looks actually quite pro by the end. I'm always amazed when we get sent the photos. So have heart, have faith in yourself. You will look pro. Um, and the Spanish lessons, really useful because unlike Asia or Africa as a continent, you know, typical gap year traveling continents, Nobody speaks English or has any intention to do so. So learning basic Spanish is essential for your trip so that you can engage with the local community. And for those of you, those of you that are traveling on afterwards, really important. So um, we're not asking you to be fluent. We're just going to get you up to basic conversational standards so that you can communicate in hostels and shops and restaurants, that type of thing. But if you are already fluent in Spanish, we are not going to waste your time. You will be in the advanced class with either Peggy or Lily, and they will push your Spanish. So you will get you will get into the right class at the right pace for you. And that will be done when you're out there. OK, happy so far. Cool. Then you are going to go off, you've got two weeks there, then you're gonna go for a long weekend to Serenus, which is the really nice turtle sanctuary. This is actually one of my favorite places throughout your entire itinerary. It is super stylish, super beautiful. Um, kind of the beach, you're the only people on this beach that goes for miles. And so you really kind of see, yes, they're a turtle sanctuary. Yes, it's all against, it's a race against the poaching. 
but it's also seeing how this one place is taking a real kind of sorting out all the kind of food issues for the local community. So it's big on permaculture, big on growing vegeta vegetables and everyone on for a much wider um, community rather than just yourself. So you can see another project in, in, in play. While you're there, now we cannot guarantee turtles, okay? It is like going on safari, we can't guarantee it. So I'm telling you now, if you don't see one, it is just unlucky. But it's highly likely that you will because it is in January and it is turtle season. But I just don't want anybody on the feedback form saying, you said I was going to see a turtle because I can't guarantee that. But it's highly likely. So the jobs that you've got to be done at this time of year are really important if you do, do see a mum laying um, a, a nest, it will be a matter of getting those eggs out and then putting them into the sanctuary where they are all um, safe and protected. They're protected from the poachers, from the tide, from the plastic, from predators, da, da, da. But you will learn all about turtles and their whole life cycle when you are there. So I won't ruin it for you now. Okay. Then you go back for another week, back into Santa Teresa, okay? Carrying on where you left off. Then the last two and a bit weeks, you're on the move. Your next move is to go into the cloud forest, which is the adventure capital of Costa Rica. This is where you, it is much cooler. So if those of you had been dying in the uh, humidity, yay, Monteverde, you can put your jeans back on. Oh, no humidity there. It's utter heaven. So Monteverde, you've got the cloud forest. It is hot in there. Uh, you can zip wire. You can bungee jump. You can go um, horse riding, go to coffee. Think. There's masses to do. So every morning you will have a leap activity. And then every afternoon you will have spare time to do any of these weird and wonderful add-ons. I highly, highly recommend you do the zip wiring. That is awesome. And if you're thinking, oh, maybe I want to do the bungee jump, don't do the bungee jump. Don't commit that till after the zip wiring because at the zip wiring, right at the end, they have this hideous thing called the Tarzan jump where you literally jump off a platform and swing over the jungle. So it might that might be enough of a hideous bungee jump sensation don't know what your bag is but you might think actually that's me done but horse riding everyone loves that you don't need to know how to ride a horse we've seen all sorts of people hop on and you know go up into into the um the kind of it's it's, it's a really kind of, it's an amazing area here it's a kind of spine so you can go right to the tippy top of this spine of mountains and if the view is good, you can see both the Pacific and the Caribbean sides. Really rather nice. Okay. After Monteverde, then you're going to go down to Samara Beach, which is, you know, it's you've got Santa Teresa, which is the Ibiza. I would say Samara is more of the Mallorca. It's it's a bit quieter, calmer, a uh, bit more chilled. So you're going to be based there. This is where you're going to end your trip. So kind of all your celebrations will be here. And while you're here, you're going to be split into two. Okay. And you've got two, one group going off at a time to ASVO, which is the other second turtle sanctuary, which is the really, really remote Robinson Crusoe experience. This is where you have to do a river crossing to get there. And when you're there, you're literally staying in a tin hut on the beach. But it's fun. Everyone has to help with the cooking. Your shower is a hose pipe. You're sleeping in, in bunk beds, you know, with a mosquito net down. But you're there for two nights and you just, it, it's an adventure. So it, everyone kind of loves this place. Then you come back to Samara at the end to celebrate, yay, the end of your trip. Back to San Jose. And off you go. Home or onward traveling. So. That is your itinerary. Everyone happy with that so far? Any questions? Good. Oh, yes. So, oh, hold on. Libby, you go first. 
if I'm staying on to travel afterwards, will I still come back to San Jose with you at the end? You could do what you like and you don't need to make that decision until the end. But okay? the options there, back to, options San Jose there to go back to San Jose, be dropped off halfway on your journey or you end up, you just stay at Samara. Okay, Lottie, what was your... Uh, what do you do at the turtle sanctuary if there aren't any turtles? Oh, lots of jobs to be done. There's stuff to do. <laughs> There's stuff to be done. So the, the job that needs to be done, so it is about breaking work. So you have to brace yourself for this, is turning the sand around. So in a turtle sanctuary, it gets divided up. It's a kind of patch of sand which gets divided up like a chessboard. And in each square is where a nest, if you find one, find one on the beach, that is you put one in that nest and it gets labeled up the date because it's it's like kind of 56 days from being the eggs being um, um, laid to hatching. I can't remember the exact time, but it is literally exact. Then they decide how many nests they want to be male, how many they want to be female. And they and that is determined by the temperature. So then they put, well, those ones need to be in the sunshine. Those ones are going to be in the shade. Those ones will have black plastic put on it. So the sat, the soil gets hotter. It's really technical. Then when they, when they are born and run for the hills and you help, you help them get down to the sea, then that patch, that square of sand needs to be dug out. Okay discarded and new sand brought in, ready in preparation for the next lot. So it's a kind of rolling process that you will you will be involved in. So it is backbreak, it is backbreaking work, I'm afraid to say. So, you know, put your suntan lotion on and and your and your bottle of water and off you go. Okay. So now this is where I want you to concentrate. I want to discuss throughout your itinerary budgeting okay money i want you to take each and every one of you physical bank cards okay you i know this is this is this is going old fashioned so i need you to take your debit card and a monzo revolut starling one of those free cash you know withdrawal cards okay two cards do not think you can get away with one do not think you can just use your telephone apple pay no -uh, it's not happening out there okay the reason i want two cards is that one is locked away at all times so in your backpack in the in your house in your wherever you're staying with us onward traveling and then you only ever take out your revolute card so if you get one nicked lose one drop them in the sea You've got a backup, okay? That is super, super serious. Um, as with your telephone, you're to take your normal up to speed telephone, but you're to take a backup phone as well. Everyone has a backup phone. Don't care if it's a Nokia. Everyone's got a drawer in their kitchen full of knackered old phones because the post in South America does not exist. So if you lose a bank card, if you lose a telephone, it's it's tough. That's why it's really good to have a backup. Okay? Yes, Lottie. I haven't got like a backup iPhone. Can I literally like go out and buy a Nokia brick? Yes. Will that work? Can. Yes, you can. It's and actually it's really good to have a backup phone, whether it's a Nokia brick or anything. Um, because the next question people ask is phone SIM cards. Throughout your entire journey, you've got Wi-Fi, okay? So you can just rely on Wi-Fi. The only place you don't have Wi-Fi is actually in the two turtle sanctuaries, but you're not there for long. And it's actually good, and we do encourage everyone to switch their phones off so that you have in-the-moment moments. Um, but the backup phone is often good to put a local SIM card in. But And the local SIM cards, if you want one, they're everywhere. So you'll be taken to a place to get a local ZIM card on day one. Okay. When it comes to just going back to money, 
take $100 cash with you. It's always good to have a little bit of cash. Okay, $100 is good. You can pay in cash, but remember you will get local currency as your change. So be switched on, okay? I can't tell you what the local what the currency exchange rate is, but having just been in Cambodia, this is when even myself, I should know better, gets ripped off every time because I get I get into a panic. I don't know the exchange rate. I don't understand the local currency. It comes in millions. I get into a right hot sweat. So just go slow and just be appreciate that you're going to pay in dollars and they'll give you the local currency. When you go to the cash point, get local currency out. Okay, little and often. Okay, and there are cash points everywhere. Okay, Libby, you were going to ask a question. Yeah, I have two now. <laughs> Go. Um, which of those bank cards that you said about would be the best one to get? Because I have looked into all of them, but I wasn't sure. Well, which which one? Which one do we have problems with? Monzo. I'm just having an extra conversation with Zoe on my on my right. Say go chase. She, Zoe says go chase. She's just come back from six months traveling, and she said chase was her favorite. Yeah, I would have okay. chase. She got she, back. Okay, she got you can get cash back with Chase, uh, Revolut or Monzo or Starling. I would go Starling. Okay. Any any of them do so so. If you if you've got one, got Monzo, stick with it. Okay. Right. So you've got, you know, you now know how much money you're going to, how you're going to take your money out, and you're going to get local currency when you are there. Okay. Now I just want to whiz through what you are going to spend. I want you to know, and I'm telling you now in big capitals, Costa Rica is expensive. Okay. It is obscenely expensive. And it is more so when you go to the really fancy cocktail bars and sushi bars in Santa Teresa, because they are all there saying, come in, come in. But you are not going to go to those cocktail bars and spend 10 quid on a cocktail because your budget will just fly out. So Jack and the team, when you get there, you've got Kirsten, you've got um, Lizzie and you've got Jack. Peggy and Lily. They are going to tell you exactly where to go for the best price of everything. So listen up to them. You have got to be savvy and work Costa Rica, okay? Before you blow your budget. When you're in Jacara, Monteverde and Samara, okay? You have breakfast and lunch provided, but supper is extra, okay? So you've got to budget. I would say by the time you've finished with drinks and everything, it's about $15 a night for that. And I'm just going to talk in dollars. So be sassy. When you're in Santa Teresa, you can cook for yourselves. So you can, as a team, go to the supermarket, get lots of pasta and voila, knock yourself, knock yourself out with a kind of pasta delight. Also in camp, they do pizza night, sushi night, and they and they kind of have a menu, and it's about kind of eight eight to ten dollars. So I would be signing up for those because those are more cost effective. All right, when you're in the um, when you're in the two turtle sanctuaries, all your food is included, and when you're in Monteverde, look out instead of going to really the touristy places, you know, all the kind of pizzerias and everything. Ask Lizzie and um, uh, Kirsten to take you to the local soda bars, S-O-D-A. Now, they are the local Costa Rican food. Now, you might be sick to death of pinto and beans and not like it, but it's much cheaper and it's much more fun. Okay, so look out for those. So that is your food that I want you to budget for. So say $15 a night. Um now I want to talk about activities, what, because they really can add up, especially when you're in Monteverde, you think, I want to do this, that, and blah, blah, blah. okay? At the moment, I would highly recommend budgeting for two activities. One in Monteverde, which is the zip wire, and that's about $70. 
And in your itinerary that I'm going to send you or actually upload to your MyLeap, you will see I've got listed everything else, such as this, um, the uh, uh, the bungee jump is about $100 now. Horse riding is about 45 So you can see how they can really rack up. So you've got to be discerning. So I would choose, I would budget for, if anyone's going to ask what you want for Christmas, say donation towards my zip wire and the Tortuga Island Tour, which you'll do one weekend, which everyone loves. That's kind of um, where you go out on the boat to the islands, you see all the dolphins and go snorkeling and have a picnic out. Everyone loves that. So I would budget for those two in particular. Okay? Drinking, just be careful. Don't choose the expensive cocktails. Okay? So everyone happy on, on the money? Yeah? Right. Moving on. I've got visas here. Just so you know, you do not need a visa for Costa Rica or any other Central or South American country. You get a 90-day entrance visa in your passport on arrival. Okay? Pit, what to take. Clothing. Okay? In your MyLeap area, you will have a suggested kit list. But in a nutshell, less is more. All right? It is stinking, steamy, gorgeous, hot out there. So you will be wandering around in shorts and a strappy top, bikinis, take as many as you, as you know, kind of three or four boys, you're going to be wandering around in shorts and a grubby t-shirt. Well, let's hope it's not grubby, but you know, nothing, you don't need anything fancy. But having said that, in the evenings, you do want to, you know, you're going to go to nice, you know, nice beach bars. So you want to feel a little bit, you know, Groovy. Um, so shoes, I would be taking a your trainers which you wear in the evening to go out. Okay, a knackered pair of trainers that no one cares about, and they're good to get. You're happy for them to get wet, go trekking in the cloud forest. Da 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 da. That and then a pair of um, well, I think they're really nice, but those plastic Birkenstocks. Some people last. Some people this year have been taking the Crocs, not a not a designer's you know piece of shoe thing of choice, but they're so practical. But the plastic plastic Berkies are perfect. And literally, you would live in those, or a pair of flip flops, sliders, whatever. No more than three pairs. Quick drying towels are useful. Head torch is useful. Um, what else? Uh, how you're going to carry all your stuff. Yes, you could take with regards to luggage. If you want to take a rucksack and you've got one, great. If you're going to buy one, don't. Just take a duffel bag. Any sort of bag is you is 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 acceptable if it is soft. Okay, so no no hard suitcases, please. The reason you don't want to take those is because they are, you can't kind of squeeze them into the back of vans, strap them easily onto the roof of vans. They're real pain. So um, any any major piece of kit, which is soft. A day rucksack is useful, especially for the plane, about kind of 20-ish litres. Um, that's always useful. And then really critical is a bum bag. Have we got any in the office? Oh, so have we got any in the office? No, they've all gone home. We've just done a video on it. It's, you know, those Uniglo cross body bum bags everyone's wearing at the moment. Get one in your stocking. They are what you want. You basically want a cross body bag that you feel is pretty cool. And when, so when you're out in the evenings, it can stay on your body. You don't take it off and put it down on the table walk off, get distracted, and then it gets nicked. Okay, so when you go out in the evening, you want your money, your phone to be on your body at all times. So there's a little, little crossbody bag, I don't care, but that's the, that's the key. Any questions on your luggage? Nope, okay. Um, washing clothes, you could hold on, you could get your clothes washed, 
laundrettes everywhere. People can do it in camp. You just you can wash it yourself or take it to the laundrette. And it's about ten dollars for a big bag. Yes, go. Um, what is the size normally of like the big your big kind of bag? How many liters normally do people bring? Or well, so I've got at home and we use so you can get. The kind of norm for a rucksack is about 80 litres. But I prefer a North Face duffel bag, <clears throat> which is probably between anything about 80 to 100 litres, because I, I hate getting everything squashed. And then uh, if you're taking a duffel bag, packing cubes are so useful for keeping everything organised. Oh, okay. Maybe wanting to speak with Zoe. Any other questions? Go. Uh, actually, yeah, you know, Arami. Um, for sorry, this isn't really relevant to the kit, but for the visa, if you're staying more than ninety days, like if you're going to travel for quite a while, what do you do then? You can't stay in any of these countries for longer than ninety days. So you're going to have to leave before that 90-day visa is up, cross the border into Nicaragua or Panama for 24 hours and then come back in. Oh, okay, so it's not like all of them together is 90 days. For each of them, it's yeah. 90 days. Each country has a 90-day 90 90 day rule. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you're jumping, then that, that's fine. Okie dokes. I think if um, you could get it out there, it would probably be. I did just think of something sense. else. What was it? it okay. It. Right. Okay. Then the last thing is actually two last things the, the accommodation. I'm going to talk about the accommodation. So, the accommodation at Jakira when you are in Santa Teresa, okay, that is really nice. Yes. Really nice. So that is a huge, we've been working with Chris and his team. Chris has just built a very nice house there. He lives there with his wife and entire family. It's a big family operation, Jakira. They can take, you You guys are 24. They can take another 24 at the same time. And the other 20, but well, they can take 50 people at any one time. The other half come from a company like the Leap, Leap but they come from Germ Germany, the Netherlands, Amsterdam, all around there. So you will see them, They you will kind of cross, but they're doing something a, a bit different, but it makes for a good social vibe in camp. So you'll make, for, I don't know, just visualizing camp, it is, it's got a pool, it's got hammocks, it's got a kind of pizza oven, big dining room, loads of kind of balconies to chill on. It's a really chilled five acre plot of jungle, which is 10 minute walk down to the um down down the road to the beach. It's a very steep hill. Okay, going down is easy, coming them up is a bit exhausting. But you know, that's where it is. And the food there, everything is it's very stylish. And you'd feel pretty groovy when you're there. Serenus, again, is stylish, but rustic. Okay, so in all places, in, in Santa Teresa, you're going to get nice showers, flushing loos, all kind of Western is all very nice. In Serenus, it's very nice. Uh, Monteverde, you're going to be in a hostel. More basic, but, you know, it's kind of, it's not attractive, but it's clean and nice and functional. Samara, again, another hostel, which is all, all very nice. And Samara at that ASVO, very, very basic. So you've got a bit of everything throughout your entire journey. But when you're in Santa Teresa, that does set the bar high because that is really nice. So you feel like this is a good place to be. I'm happy here for three weeks. OK, yes, Libby. Sorry, I've got so many questions. I'm traveling afterwards. Will I need a sleeping bag if I'm going to be in hostels? No, the hostels throughout Central South America are so slick and really clean. The, you know, if you were really worried, I would take it. If, if just in case, take a sleeping bag liner. That 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 is all. 
But no, it, the, the whole setup in Central South America with regard to hostels are is really good. But you do get what you pay for. So I would always pay a little bit extra for the nicer accommodation because you've got um, you got a kind of better vibe, better better kind of bar there, the people, everything rather than the, the grotty ones. When you're how much is that average out there? Huh? How much is it to stay in a hostel out there usually? Well, if you were staying at the Salinas, that's probably about thirty dollars a night. So that's the kind of top thirty to thirty-five. Um, I, I think you should be budgeting about twenty dollars a night. Maybe a bit more. But but when you leave Costa Rica, then the prices go down. So if you're going to Guatemala, you're suddenly at kind of ten to twelve dollars a night, and you're celebrating. <laughs> okay, so it's literally half price. Okay, so my last thing is health and safety. Okay, this is where I put my teacher's hat on. And, uh, but it's got to be said. Okay, you are not on a school trip. Okay, we do not want to treat you like you are on a school trip. You are so beyond that. Okay, but you are a team. Okay, and we need the team to really look after each other. Hardly any of you know each other. In fact, I don't know if any of you know each other. Um, so that is quite daunting for some more than others. So just be mindful of that, especially in week one, that everybody will be feeling out of sorts and just say, Christ, this is a challenge for you all. You've got the challenge of meeting each other, the challenge of the jet lag, the change of the heat and humidity and not knowing, you know, what, what's going on. So the first week is really, really critical to watch out for everybody and just be uber supportive if you see people just kind of you know not with struggling because it can happen um when you're going out into santa teresa okay it is there is a lot going on down there so we need you to really listen up to jack and his briefing when you arrive about the areas to not go playing in the good areas and the bad areas OK, there are way, 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 you know, better areas than this kind of one dodgy nightclub in the right the far end of town, which we always say, please don't go. Everyone always goes. But we say, please don't go because it, it just always attracts the kind of dod dod dodgy types from town, you know. So listen up to the briefing on day one in of where and what not to do in Santa Teresa. The big problems happen when people are drunk, okay? Now, of course, go and have a few drinks, but when you get absolutely plastered, that is when it um, gets boring for everybody else. They've got to kind of manhandle you to get back to the house. Um, uh, and you become vulnerable when you are really drunk. That's when you become a target. You are a target. You're fresh off the plane. Um, everyone knows that you are kind of young and probably on your gap year. They expect it in January, in, in you know, this time of year. So have your wits about you. Look after each other and yourselves. Do not be that idiot. OK, there's always one. And if you are that idiot that gets drunk, is annoying and begins to really hack off the team and the team leaders, you will get a kind of slapping, like, can you just get yourself in order? If you don't, then you get an email from me saying, you are that person, okay? And if you continue to be that person, you then get asked to leave the program. Goodbye, okay? So it is quite, it is quite brutal. And especially when it comes to drugs. There are, as you can imagine, in every country, there will be people offering you drugs. Um, it is all available there but we're not interested in that vibe. We just want everyone to have a kind of fun, happy, great, work hard, play hard, but all within kind of uh, parameters which are, you know, that give, that give a positive team, team vibe. Okay, that's lecture over. Okay, don't tell me I didn't tell you. Um, so that is it from me. Any questions from any of you before we say goodbye? Do you feel better prepared? Yeah? Do you feel excited? <laughs> Great. Smashing. 
you should be. You're in for a treat. Just think, you're going to be there in January, and we're still going to be here in dreary England. So, so um, good. So, any other questions? No, all good. Okay. So, I will put this recording um, in. I will send you it by email. I will gonna uh, put your itinerary into your my leap so you can kind of have a flick through that. It's kind of recap of what I've said, and then any questions, just switch off now and enjoy Christmas. And then we will be we're closed between Christmas and New Year. And then in the New Year, we're here. Any last minute questions, you can grab us. Okay. Okie dokie. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank you. Happy Christmas to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.